Hello, this is Law 3000. Uh, we're going to go over Chapter 3 today. Um, I appreciate all your emails, and I'm so happy to be going over this next chapter with you. So I'm just going to share my screen like last time. Here we go. Get right into it as quickly as possible. All right. So. Uh, welcome again. Uh, this is uh, week number two, chapter three. We're going to be doing chapter three and four. So uh, this is ethics and business decision making. So some people say ethics and business, they don't go hand in hand. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of business people out there that agree with that, but uh, um, there are a lot of circumstances you have to take into account to make the right decision for your company. Reputation, uh, as someone said, can be built for years and then it only takes one poor decision to ruin it. So uh, let's get into some of the material. Our, our objective of chapter three is to determine what um, business ethics is and why it's important. We're going to, um, how can business leaders and encourage their companies to act ethically, ask that to ourselves. We're going to also uh, ask how do duty based ethical standards differ from outcome based ethical standards. Our other learning objectives are what are the six guidelines that an employee can use to evaluate whether his or her actions are ethical. Sometimes there's a lot of gray area and it's hard to determine whether you're doing the ethical thing. Uh, there's different and then what types of ethical issues might arise in the context of international business transactions. So like the picture shows, um, sometimes uh, something may be legal, but it may not be ethical. Ethical might lead you in a different direction. Um, sometimes doing the ethical thing can be hard because it might be less profitable, but in the long run, it could uh, benefit um, your company, your rep reputation and uh, profit um, in the long run. Uh, in the short run, a lot of decisions are made to uh, prop up profit. Uh, you know, the stock market always looks at the quarterly reports and some companies lose money to, uh, to plan for the long-term. Uh, so there's always like a short-term, long-term uh, ethical dilemma. And uh, there's also legal and versus ethical decision-making that could be a dilemma as well. So uh, as an introduction, um, ethics is not defined as a law or laws, but it can ha have a tremendous impact on a business's finances and reputation. So, uh, you know, some companies crash and burn based on their decisions that are legal, but uh, if, if they're not made in an ethical manner, they could uh, be the demise of that company. Or if something is found out to be a profitable situ situation, but seems unethical, sometimes consumers change their mind about that company. So the main ideas on chapter three are that the philosophical basis for making ethical decisions, um, there are many, and there also are application, uh, there's the application of business ethics to global situations. Uh, which is more difficult because global um, climate, other countries have different uh, perceptions on ethics and what is uh, right and wrong and what is uh, the best decision <laughs> for a company to make. Sometimes it's in the best decision for the state. Um, China, for instance, a lot of uh, companies are state owned. So um, international uh, differences can cause a lot of problems and uh, we'll go through that as well. Business ethics. Uh, they're focused on what considered right or wrong behavior in the business world and how a business person can apply a moral and ethical principles to a situation that arise in the workplace. Business ethics are important. Um, they're becoming more so because a lot of investors want to invest in uh, ethical businesses that are sustainable and focus on the greater good. Uh, I'll go into that as well. There's a new legislator, legislation that just got um, offered up 
for uh, people who want to invest in more sustainable businesses. So profit max maximization and the rise of corporate citizenship are two important factors, but uh, business ethics are very important. So ethics, uh, I'm gonna go back to Aladdin just because I'm following a theme here. <laughs> it was not intentional, but I thought, hey, um, watch this merchant scene. I cannot play it. Like I said, it, it just takes up too much bandwidth to play it and record it. But watch the scene uh, of this merchant in the beginning of the movie. I don't know how many of you have seen all of Aladdin, but I grew up in the 80s and 90s. So uh, it was one of my favorite. And so ask yourself, is this merchant being ethical? And how far can you go in sales puffery in terms of saying your product is wonderful um, and then having it not turn out to be that great? So take a look and it might make you chuckle. But, uh, you know, best movie from Disney, I think, in my opinion. OK, we won't play that, though. All right, business ethics. Um, you look at a few different implications and decisions uh, when, you're, when you're making a decision that's ethical. Uh, though, uh, most people will evaluate well, whether there's the legal implications of each, each decision. Uh, also, you'll look at the public relations impact of your business um, decision uh, and the safety risk for consumers and employees. And then you'll look at the financial implications. So those are the four factors. And so the main point of this chapter is that corporations should strive to make ethical business decisions and evaluate each decision carefully looking at those four factors. Uh, they should look at all the stakeholders in each um, different uh, decision, uh, which can be time consuming. And sometimes I know for me, when you're a business person or even just an employee, you want to make a decision quicker than, than slowly. <laughs> um, but it's good to look at all the different implications of each action for your uh, changes in your, your business or your um, anything that you decide to do. You should uh, consider the benefits of long-term profit maximization over short-term profit maximization and how the internet can affect your, your reputation if something comes out about your decisions. Um, you want to have a strategy to create a favorable company image so that uh, you look like you're doing good for the world, <laughs> which, cannot, which sometimes can be difficult. So, so an example I came up with is that uh, only 12% currently from 2017 data, um, only 12% of uh, employees receive paid maternity leave currently. Um, most women have to choose between physically recovering from childbirth and bonding with their baby. And the other choice is just making a living. So um, I'm very lucky I work at Wayne State full time and they provide uh, um, family leave up to 12 weeks of paid time off. Uh, so I'm one of those lucky few, but um, if you've seen from maybe 2010 up till now, more companies are just deciding to offer paid uh, family leave, not just maternity leave. And, and it's a way of um, showing, having a, a good reputation and also attracting employees and it's kind of a long-term uh, profit maximization because the fewer employees that leave based, due to childbirth or family circumstances changing, uh, the more money that company will really retain because it takes a lot of um, training and time and effort to have a new employee come on board. Uh, if one leaves due to uh, birth or childcare issues or what have you. So, um, I just wanted to point out that this is a good example of uh, ethical decision, business decision, but looking at all the different reasons why it would benefit the company, but also benefit employees and also the reputation of that company. Um, I don't know if you read the news much, but there's always a new company that's coming out as having um, more paid leave than another one. I, I think I read uh, Facebook provides six months of uh, paid family leave. Right now, uh, under the US uh, federal laws, um, there's the 
Paid Family Medical Leave Act, and it only provides 12 weeks of non-paid time off to be with a child, a newborn. Uh, and it's only if you work for a company that's 50 people or more, and it's only uh, available to employees if they've been there at least a year. So it really doesn't cover that much right now. And considering how many women are in the workforce and also men who have uh, little babies coming uh, and same-sex couples or what have you, there's, there's a lot of changes that need to be um, updated possibly in the laws, but companies are saying, this is in our best interest if we retain our employees. So let's have paid uh, family leave instead of waiting for the government to do anything. So uh, whether you disagree with it or not, it, there are the reason why a lot of them are making this decision is that it's in their best interest and it's, it's an ethical decision as well. So just because an action is legal does not mean it's ethical. So just uh, reviewing that point, sometimes compliance with the law is sometimes uh, called a moral minimum. So just because you can do something does not mean you should. <laughs> Um, so ethics is really not really a business law per se, it's, but it is kind of a, a one step above business, the law of business. It's looking at your decision making and um, thinking about the global impact. So ethics is a difficult subject for corporate officers. Uh, they usually look at just profit and figures of uh, what's working, what's not in, in the bottom line, but, and it's also highly subjective. It changes over time. Different people have different opinions about what, what's ethical and what's not. Uh, so it, it can be a convoluted and uh, controversial subject if you're talking about um, any particular decision. So most companies have an internal code of conduct or also some companies have what it's called a mission statement uh, that kind of indicates what the purpose of that company is or what uh, is an expected conduct, what is expected conduct of their employees um, to reach that mission statement. So um, I'm not sure if any of your companies that you work for have uh, these types of things, but it would be interesting to know if uh, you've read an internal code of conduct on ethics or just on your conduct uh, or whether you saw an employee handbook that had some type of ethics um, portion in it, that's pretty common uh, these days. So business ethics and social media, there's a little section about that. Um, businesses face ethical issues with respect to social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter. Employers today may conduct uh, internal internet searches and see what kind of uh, postings you have just uh, to see if they can be associated with you in some ways for ethical reasons. Um, employees may look at but not interfere with your social media posts of their employees, but there are some caveats to that. Uh, any kind of um, work uh, technology that's given to you, laptops, a cell phone for work, um, you know, they can have a policy or a requirement that you don't use it for uh, personal use, including social media. So um, those are some of the things to keep in mind. Companies also uh, may have policies regarding the use of the, your social media, um, but they must be very careful when considering a disciplinary action for violations of those policies. There's, of course, the First Amendment uh, of the Constitution allows uh, free speech up to a point, um, but also, uh, you know, there is an at-will employee circumstance where um, working for a company is at-will, meaning they can let you go for any reason. Uh, they don't need to give you a reason either. So, uh, at least in Michigan, it's an at-will employee um, state. So, um, uh, it's something to keep in mind because uh, if you say something controversial on social media, and it get back, gets back to your employer, uh, there can be consequences, unfortunately.
So there's uh, different approaches to ethical reasoning. Ethical reasoning is the process in which the individual examines this, a situation in light of his or her ethical standards. There's two approaches to business decision making, um, which is duty-based ethics, implying that there are certain rights that everyone uh, is allowed to have. And then there's outcome-based ethics uh, concerning the, any of your, the consequences of your actions. So duty-based ethics comes from um, religious beliefs, follow uh, the fundamental rules of moral action, and then there's fill thought, fill and so Ugh, I can't speak today. Philosophical reasoning, such that as the German philosopher Immanuel Kant, who identified some general guiding principles for moral behavior based on what he believed to be fundamental, the fundamental nature of human beings. A potential problem for those who support a duty-based approach is deciding what, which rights are more important in a given situation. There could be multiple duties in the same situation, duty to uh, oneself, one's community, um, one's uh, customer. Uh, management co constantly faces ethical conflicts and trade-offs when considering all those affected by a business. There's the firm's owners, there's the employees, customers of its products or services, the suppliers, the community in which it does business, and then society as a whole. Then there's the outcome-based ethics, uh, which is utilitarianism. Um, it's considered the, they always, people using this method think of the greatest good for the greatest number of people usually. Uh, it's based on the philosophical reasoning of um, Betham and uh, Mill, and it applies a theory. Um, you need to, to apply this theory, you need to think of the cost benefit analysis and weigh the positive um, you know, with the negative to see which is a better outcome. So to get a better uh, idea of what this uh, approach to ethical reasoning really is, I of course included a short snippet about it. And uh, so take a look. And then there's uh, the corporate social responsibility approach and it, it's a combination of duty-based and outcome-based ethics. It, it combines a commitment to good citizenship with a commitment to making ethical decisions, improving society and minimizing environmental impact. Uh, corporate social responsibility is becoming more popular. Some of the bit larger corporations don't really take into uh, social responsibility as much, but um, you'll see this more of a talked about subject with possibly some of the more uh, younger companies that are uh, producing um, new IPOs on the stock market. Uh, sometimes they have a corporate responsibility um, based uh, company. So, uh, so you really know why, why they're uh, doing business, what, what their commitment is, and um, it might be just a, a newer uh, focus than, than it once was. So a number of theories based on the idea that corporations can and should act ethically and be accountable society for that their actions exist. There's uh, the social aspects, stakeholder approach, and then corporate citizenship. Um, the social aspects include that corporations must demonstrate they are promoting goals that the society deems worthwhile and moving towards solutions to social problems. Um, I'd say this is a newer approach to a lot of com corporations, uh, but um, there's, a, there's a desire that people want to invest in companies that have a uh, worthwhile um, goal to, to make society better. There's the stakeholder approach. It considers all groups affected by corporate decisions, not just stakeholders, um, uh, shareholders, excuse me. A lot of bigger companies only think about the shareholders, I would have to say. But um, the younger companies or companies that maybe don't have a more global um, impact are, are thinking about all the different stakeholders, their community, 
their uh, customers, um, their employees. There are some, some companies I've noticed um, that sell uh, groceries that are um, a certain type of company that, that has, is owned by employees. So that's a way to give more of a stakehold to different people other than the, the shareholders. Uh, there wouldn't be any stock uh, in that circumstance, but the employees would have a, a, a stake in the company. Um, then there's corporate citizenship. It, this approach is when corporations demonstrate they are promoting goals that society deems worthwhile. So there's ex this is one example I came up with uh, in terms of an example of ethics and making investing decisions. It's kind of on the other side of things. Instead of uh, running the company, thinking about where you want to put your money in terms of the stock market, um, uh, Congressman uh, Levin introduced legislation aimed at sustainable investments. He really uh, looks at environmental, social, and governance factors that uh, help the long term um, in our world. And so he in, wanted to have investors know more about companies who are um, supporting environmental, social, and, gov and good governance factors. Um, so his legislation is calling on like uh, Fidelity to tell um, possible investors uh, the environmental factors of a company, the social factors, and then any um, good governance that's going on. So it's uh, just when one way to understand a company's goals better. And uh, sometimes it's, it's not really straightforward. If you just, uh, if you just look, read about them in the news or something, you don't really know what their environmental focus is or their social good focus is. Um, so it's, it's important to uh, know more about what you're putting your money into. Uh, okay, so making ethical business decisions. To make ethical decisions, um, employees can use six widely accepted guidelines. Companies once considered uh, leaders in their industry, such as Goldman, Goldman Sachs, were brought down by the unethical behavior of a few, according to uh, this book. Um, it could be a company culture, though, as well. So you read, you saw the Enron. A video, you kind of saw the deception that uh, the, the board of directors and everyone was a part of. Uh, the employees were not necessarily aware of what was going on with their um, accounting practices. So really, it should be the top management and owners should lead by example and use a systematic approach to reaching ethical decisions. So everyone is aware of them. So these are the five different guidelines. Um, so there's the law, like I said, uh, is the action you're considering legal? So that, that should be your first question you think about. Number two, you should think of the rules and procedures. Does this action follow company rules and procedures? Number three, your values. Does the action follow laws uh, and company policies that reinforce society's values? Conscious, do you have a guilty conscious about the action you're about to take? Uh, some people have somehow um, diminished their conscious uh, reasoning skills. So for instance, in that Enron uh, video, uh, they were doing accounting that, that was improper. Uh, I've read some books about it. Um, our Senator, Senator uh, Carl Levin, who works at Wayne State Law School, he uh, had a whole uh, investigation on Enron and they were doing improper accounting practices generally. Um, so somehow the people who were doing those things were not guilty, <laughs> did not feel the guilt. They were just trying to maximize profits. So sometimes it's very hard to ask yourself, uh, do, do I feel guilty about this? Because sometimes you're just doing something to preserve your job or to uh, get a bonus or what have you, but uh, try to get past that and really think uh, about uh, guilt. Okay, number five, promises. Will the action live up to the commitments you have made to others, both inside and outside of the business? So uh, did you promise to 
uh, X, Y, or Z. Uh, I don't know, I don't have an example, but number six, heroes is what you are planning on doing an action that one of your heroes would take. Think about someone you really look up to, would they do the same thing? Um, it's always good to think about uh, someone you look up to taking the same exact action to consider whether they would do it. So um, here's an example of a, a issue that may seem very unethical, but somehow has gotten um, pushed aside by Walmart. Uh, Walmart is such a big company. And so uh, they sub subcontract out to different companies around the world to create clothing and other items for them. Um, in this video, there's a $10 clothing item that's being made for Walmart. It's not a direct contract with this, this company in Bangladesh, I believe it is, but it's a subcontract. So they don't have direct uh, knowledge of it, they could probably claim, but to get a $10 item, they're probably not paying very good or high wages. So uh, I doubt they really look into it. That might seem unethical. They don't have any uh, way to uh, test whether uh, people are getting uh, poverty level wages or not. They probably don't care because really they're just trying to make profit, which is understandable, but uh, thinking about it ethically, um, they should c consider uh, some of these, these issues because their reputation, Walmart does have a reputation for um, breaking labor laws or, or not caring about um, who's making their products uh, across the, the world. So in this case, it's uh, women and also some young children, not children, but like 12 year olds who are uh, making these clothing, clothing items. There's no emergency exits in these facilities and there's no um, way to put out a fire. Basically, it's just one sweat, big sweatshop. So take a look at the video and um, think about how could Walmart make a better ethical decision in this circumstance and did they make an ethical decision? And then my question is, how do American companies value workers in other parts of the world? Is it easy to take, you know, uh, turn a blind eye uh, in, in hopes that you, you maximize, maximize profit? Uh, I, I've heard, heard of App, Apple doing the same types of things, uh, having uh, underage uh, youth making their phones or, or technology and um, they're kind of, uh, their, their position is that just don't tell me and we, we don't wanna know. So it's something to consider. Okay, so on the other side of the spectrum, the good part, I think, is that um, companies are changing on their own because of uh, making cost benefit analysis and ethical, um, ethical, you know, cost benefit weighing. So in this case, uh, a lot of uh, companies that you would think are oil companies are actually turning to renewable energy lately. They are changing. They're changing on their own. People are uh, wanting more green energy. In fact, uh, I, I own stock in DT Energy. And one reason I bought them is because not only are they oil, do, do they um, make profit from oil and gas, but they, they are putting a huge amount of their investment into green energy. So nowadays you don't have to invest in, in a uh, solar panel company. You can invest in these large companies that are changing on their own because they see that green energy is cheap and it's plentiful and it's something that um, could really benefit the world and uh, the future. So uh, there could be thousands of hundreds of thousands of jobs in green energy if we change more quickly too. So, I mean, there's so many benefits. So take a, a look at this uh, Wall Street Journal uh, clip on will the green energy boom last? I, I really do believe it's going to become even bigger, but um, you take a look and you consider whether it is or not. Okay, so now we're gonna get into global business ethics. Uh, given the various cultures and religions throughout the world, it is not surprising that conflicts and ethics and fre 
frequently arise between foreign and US businesses. There's a few notable differences related to number one, the role of employment law governing workplace conditions. Number two, the practice of bribing foreign officials to secure favorable contracts. So these are the two main differences, just like the Bangladesh um, women working for poverty wages and uh, the un underage uh, young girls there as well. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of people know that they're probably underage in that facility, but they just turn a blind eye because uh, not only does the young girl need the money, but the company doesn't really care that they're underage. So it's a it's a problem, you know. At least she has a job; she's providing for her family that's uh, living in poverty. But on the other hand, um, you know, it, we all wish that uh, young people could get an education and uh, find something else before having to go to work. <laughs> so, and then the practice of bribing foreign officials, that is very common in some countries. Uh, you have to bribe or give some kind of monetary reward to get a contract, a business contract in some countries. I, I remember working on some cases like that. When I was in uh, law school, there was, um, someone who got in trouble for bribing a big company that got in trouble, but that was the common practice uh, in China to, to provide some kind of uh, monetary uh, kickback, I guess you'd call it, for a business deal. <laughs> so, um, so this is uh, your example about doing business in China. There's the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, uh, which is a U.S. statute that prohibits firms and individuals from paying bribes to foreigners and foreign officials to further business deals. Both the Sur Securities and Exchange Commission and the Department of Justice are responsible for enforcing this uh, act. And like I said, I had direct um, experience at using this act and, and trying to defend a company um, for violating it. It's so easy to vi violate it in China though, because uh, if you wanna do a big transaction, you have to uh, give something to a foreign official. So, um, so I wanted to also let you look at this huge settlement by JP Morgan. They, were, uh, they settled for bribery, a bribery case uh, in China. Uh, I only saw a brief, Part of this, but basically it, it goes on to explain that they were hiring um, foreign officials' children uh, in exchange for business dealings. So that's uh, violating a bunch of uh, US laws, but in China, that's perfectly normal. So that's one of the ethical problems is how do you uh, do business in a foreign country when their norms are totally different than your own? <laughs> so uh, one of the uh, problems and um, you know I wish it was a, there was a simple answer but there is not a simple answer. So employment practices um, also are a concern. So like I showed that Bangladesh film once you see it you'll see that a for, foreign companies exploit its workers all the time. Uh, if if the workers in in around the um, facility that's cr producing uh, shirts, for instance, if they live, uh, you know, in poverty, and they have more power to, you know, hire them at a low wage, they're going to go for a low wage. And sometimes they hire uh, children at um, below minimum wages as well. Our country also did this uh, back when we were uh, just an industrializing country. We would pay uh, children in 19... 10, 1920 um, poverty wages to do some of the most dangerous things in the, in the world, which was like my, uh, uh, coal mining. Um, some of them did um, uh, some industrial type chemical work. Um, if, you, if you go back and you look up uh, child labor laws and how they became um, possible to even pass, it's because so many children are dying doing dangerous things in the US. So we have our own history of paying minimum, low, below minimum wages to children, especially for um, foreign and children who are immigrants. Uh, as it's just, uh, 
um, part of the unfortunate history that we have. But how do we prevent that now uh, with, uh, you know, contracting out outside of the US? How, do, how does that, how do we do that? Um, after a company may audit uh, its roles and, and see where contracts are actually going, and uh, it reveals numerous violations. Um, in 2012, supposedly Apple released a list of a uh, list of its suppliers for the first time, um, showing any violations it had. But Apple, like I said, has continuously violated um, labor law. If if the U.S. had if the if Apple was actually um, creating the products here in the U.S., they, they would probably would have to pay a lot more money and also um, hire different people because they continue to hire um, underage people or um, at below minimum wages as well. So this is an ongoing pro problem for huge conglomerate companies. Uh, do, do they maximize profit over these ethical concerns. A lot of them choose maximizing, maximizing profit until something comes to their attention where their reputation might be at stake. And then they decide to do something. So I don't know, I'm kind of skeptical about companies being able to make really good ethical decisions um, that are really big companies because usually once a company gets a certain level, um, maximizing profit and shareholder return is really their only focus, it seems like to me. So here's an example of our not so distant past. Uh, this was the biggest fire that occurred um, and killed the most people in New York City at the time. 9-11 um, exceeded the amount of people who have died from a workplace um, accident, I guess you could call it, or workplace tragedy. tragedy. But uh, this really caused um, laws to change. So take a look at this video. It's uh, about the Triangle Fire accident in New York City. So I believe that's the end of this chapter. So um, if you have any questions, please email me and uh, we'll continue from there. Thanks so much.